Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Another big exciting day in my kitchen. Where are we going? We're going to Rome. What are we making? We're going to make pasta with pork and pecorino romano cheese. Oh, does that sound fantastic? So this dish is called pasta alla Grecia, which is actually the mother or the beginning to Amatriciana, which is the video we did last week. And it's really important to Italian cook, especially Roman pasta dishes. There's four pasta dishes that I want you guys to know and study and make. And one is going to be carbonara, one's going to be cacio e pepe, one's going to be amatriciana, which we made last week. And then this week we're going to make gricia or pasta alla gricia. So this recipe came from Rome. And if you think about it, you've got these shepherds that would go out on their pilgrimages or go out on multiple days out in the, out in the fields to raise their sheep and they would have to eat. So they would bring things that were dried, dried pasta, and cured that wouldn't spoil. Cheese is already cured, it's not gonna spoil. And guanciale, or pork that's cured, isn't gonna spoil. So this is actually a peasant food. So it started off as a real simple, easy dish, but it's so delicious, it's so phenomenal, and so easy to make. Boy, I'll tell you, everybody loves it. And guys, this recipe is the authentic Italian recipe. So there's a lot of variations to this recipe now. They'll add onions and wine and, and all other ingredients, different types of fats. And that's okay. Do whatever you want. Have some fun in the kitchen. Explore and create. This recipe that we're going to go over today is literally the bare bones. This is how they made it a couple hundred years ago. This is, this is the real stuff. All right, so let's start having some fun. Let's go over ingredients. So first thing you're going to need is pasta. You're going to want one pound of a thick spaghetti. And you want to go to your Mediterranean stores, you're going to want to go to your Italian markets, you're going to want to get an Italian made pasta, durum wheat, no ingredients, you're going to want to see it rough and thick on the outside because it's pushed to a bronze dye and it gives it a rough feel on the outside and that's critical. Just remember the pasta marries or pairs with the sauce and it's all about the pasta, the right pasta, grabbing just the right amount of sauce to make the, the dish delicious to your taste buds. Second thing you're gonna need is a Pecorino Romano cheese. So Pecorino Romano comes from Lazio, Italy, shocker. Most of it is actually made in Sardinia now and it's, uh, it's just a, oh, it's a delicious cheese. This is what I have left from last week's video we did on Matriciana, but this stuff is gold. Pecorino is made from, uh, from sheep. In fact, that's what the word means. Pecore means, means sheep. So you've got sheep's milk cheese, which would make sense because Often this was made by shepherds, by people taking care of sheep. See how it's all coming together? I don't know if you guys like the history. Some of you guys love it. Some of you guys are like, all right, skip over it, whatever you want. But I find it fascinating. I always love to know the history behind the dish. The amount of Pecorino Romano cheese we want in this dish, we're going to do two cups of shredded. Now, I always use a microplaner when I shred the cheese because I want it to be really fine. I want it to emulsify right into the sauce. So we're going to do two cups of shredded Pecorino Romano cheese. And then last, we're going to do a guanciale. Now, guanciale is literally the, the cheek. It's the cheek of the, of the pig. So pancetta is going to be the abdomen of the pig. It's often called Italian bacon. The difference between Italian bacon and American bacon is this is going to be cured with salt and herbs and spices. Guanciale would be just like pancetta would be, just like American bacon, but American bacon is then smoked, so it has a different flavor to it. So guanciale is a little tougher to find. You're going to need to go to an Italian market or a uh, or a Mediterranean market. If not, pancetta. Most stores carry pancetta. That'll work for you. If not, then you can use a thick a thick cut of uh, American bacon. That'll work. Why guanciale? Why the cheek meat? and fat as opposed to the other parts of the pig because it's a peasant food and what would happen is this was actually much more valuable along with other parts of the pig but the cheekbone wasn't so whatever was left the shepherd the poor man if you will they would pick along the neck and the face of the pig to grab some meat so that's where it came from and lo and behold you've got a lot of fat and a lot of delicious meat flavor coming from that area of the pig, which, which is why this dish tastes so delicious. Next ingredient is gonna be pepper. Now remember, you've got cacio e pepe, you've got amatriciana, you've got pasta alla gricie, and that's gonna be pepper. Their, their main ingredient, just like a carbonara, right, is gonna be pepper. So you want a lot of pepper. So we're gonna want a tablespoon of ground pepper. I do a medium grind on my pepper for this dish. I wanna be able to see it. I want to be able to taste it. Now, there's some variations, guys. People use red pepper. Again, you guys can do whatever you want to do. And I would tell you, regardless of what you do, try this out because you'll find in a lot of the most delicious 
truly authentic Italian cooking, it's just a handful of ingredients. The freshness of the ingredients, the type of the ingredient, like go with a really good Pecorino Romano cheese, like go to the, go to the market and really get the good stuff. Go to the market and get the really good pasta. And that's what really makes the difference. Okay, last but not least is olive oil. Now, shocker, olive oil does not go in this dish. You would think it would, it doesn't. But if you were to add olive oil to this dish, you wouldn't go to Lazio, Italy. I'm telling you why, because the best olive oil comes from Puglia. Anybody that's a fan of the show and anybody that's a subscriber, and I want to give a huge shout out to our subscribers that are part of the, hey, the cooking Italian with Joe family. I really greatly and deeply appreciate that. Uh, anybody new to our channel, we own a farm in Italy. It's in Puglia, just above the heel. I named the company Vito and Joe after my two sons. And we co-op with a whole group of farms in that area to bring you guys some of the best extra virgin Italian authentic olive oil you're ever going to have. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, I'd love to get some. I would love for you to get some. So click the link above or below. Go to my Facebook page or my web page, Cooking Italian with Joe. Just click buy it now or shop now and uh, grab yourself a few bottles. We'll be happy to drop ship it right to your front doorstep. And uh, I always think of it as, uh, as taking a trip to Italy right, right in a bottle. Couple more things to get going on this. We're gonna need a serving dish. I'm gonna want a large pan for the stove. Now why? Because we're gonna take our pasta partially cooked and we're gonna finish cooking it in the pan. And last, guys, you're gonna need a pot of water to cook the pasta in. Guys, first thing I wanna get going on is my guanciale. So I'm gonna want about a cup to a cup and a half of chopped guanciale and we're gonna make it little cubes. We want them all around the same size. That way this cooks really well. Now a really important tip I wanna jump on because this is actually gonna move ahead pretty quick. On my boiling water, a really important tip I learned from the Nonas in Rome, we're gonna want half the amount of pasta water we traditionally use. And I know it goes against everything we've learned, but why do I want that? I wanna add a lot of starch. I want a very concentrated amount of starch in my water because we're gonna use that pasta water to actually create the sauce for the pasta. So fill this about halfway and start heating it up right when we get going because like I said, this thing is gonna actually move Really, really, oh, it sounded like a little Frank Sinatra right there. This thing's gonna move really, really quick. And I am gonna need some salt. Today we're gonna use pink Himalayan. It's briny, earthy, sexy, and pasta alla gricia. I mean, let's be honest, it's a sexy Roman dish, okay? I mean, gladiators were sexy, you know what I'm saying? And guys, I'm gonna add a good tablespoon of salt to season my pasta water. How do you know how much salt to add to the water? Usually, you're gonna do about a tablespoon-ish for a large pot of water for about four quarts. But I will tell you this, the Nona's always tell me that the amount of salt, it should taste like the sea, like the Mediterranean Sea. Sounds good to me, sounds romantic, doesn't it? Guys, by weight, this is about a half of a pound of pork. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. Beautiful, that's what I want right there. Isn't that perfect? Guys, the deliciousness is gonna be the fat, so don't worry if you see meat or not. Just cut it up, we want that fat. That's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and cube it up, just like that. Guys, our guanciale is cut and chopped. Perfect shape, meet you over at the stove. Guys, I've got my heat set at a medium, not a high, at a medium heat. And I know what you're thinking, what about oil? I know, I'd love to add Vito and Joe's oil, but you don't need it. I want only the fat I'm gonna get from the pig. And guys, we're not looking for crispy, we're looking for translucent and just the beginning of some browning. I've got the guanciale, I've got the pork browning. I've got my pasta water starting to heat up, okay? Now let's get that Pecorino Romano ready while everything's heating up. So again, I want about two cups. I got a microplaner, and I'm gonna go ahead and start grading. Again, we're gonna want two cups. Your cheese is done. Let me just check something really quick. Gotta taste that. Oh yeah. Mm. Right from Italy, how delicious. That's a trip to Sardinia in a bite. Oh, that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my cheese in a dish here. Guys, our guanciale, ooh, you can hear it, you hear it? You hear it just crisping in there, isn't that beautiful? So a couple of tips here. I've got my guanciale almost ready to go. It's almost there. I've got my cheese and pepper ready to go. I've got my water heating up. My water's almost where it needs to be because we're gonna use that starchy water in this pan in order to create that, that delicious sauce. Another couple of tips that make this dish come out mwah, molto delecio is when you subscribe to the channel. So take a moment right now, hit that red subscribe button, hit the like button and the notification bell. So listen, anything we've got going on in cooking in Italian with Joe, with the blog, with all the activities we've got going on in the farm, any new recipes, all that information will come right to your notification box. And I tell you guys this every week, it really means the world to me when you guys subscribe to the channel. Hey, make sure part of the family, you know what I'm saying? Okay, my guanciale is literally almost ready. Guys, my water's been seasoned, it's half full, so I'm gonna throw my pasta in, and I gotta pay attention here because I gotta get all the pasta submerged 
and stirred well so it doesn't stick. And think about this, we've got about 10 minutes to be fully cooked al dente. We're only gonna go about six minutes with this because we wanna finish cooking the pasta in the sauce. So our pancetta is done, guys. A couple of things. First thing I want to do is turn my heat down really low. Next, guys, I'm going to take one full ladle of water, pasta water with starch, and I'm going to add this to my pork. Why do I do that? Because one, I want to declaze the pan. I want all that deliciousness. See that? And two, I want to stop the cooking of the pork. And that water is going to help extract more of the flavor and more of the fat, and it's going to help tenderize the pork. Now while the pasta is cooking, I'm going to cook this down so it gets really thick. Essentially, I want to cook all the moisture out of this. While that's cooking down, don't forget your spaghetti. Give it a good stir. Another really important tip, guys, I want to add my pepper right now. I still got fats in there. This is hot. So I want to add a good tablespoon of pepper to this while it's cooking down. Why? Because the oils in the pan will marry and pair with the oils in the pepper. And it'll actually get the sauce nice and hot. Give it a stir. Oh, the aroma. You can smell the pork, the fat, you can smell the pepper. That is just perfect. And you wait till the heat is low on the pepper because I don't want to burn or fry the pepper. I want to extract those oils from the pepper with that heat and fat. So almost all of our moisture is gone. And now guys, I want to start the process. So I'm going to take a couple of pinches of my Pecorino Romano and this is going to help the emulsification process. Just put a little bit of the cheese in the oil, in the fat and then give it a gentle stir. And what that does is that'll actually melt and start to marry with the oil in the pan. And we're gonna go a little bit more. Guys, this is about three minutes premature. It's not al dente yet. I wanna finish cooking it inside my pork pepper sauce. It's really important, I wanna add a couple, two ladles now of my starch pasta water. And guys, now what you wanna do is give it a stir because I wanna get rid of that fluid. See all the water in there? I wanna keep cooking it down, finish cooking the pasta as it absorbs all the flavors. But you can't add the cheese until that water's gone because the cheese will clump up on you. You don't wanna break the cheese. And all the moisture from the pasta sauce is really deglazing the pan again. And it's removing all that beautiful, delicious flavor into the sauce. You guys see how it's almost there? There's hardly any moisture left. Guys, all my moisture's gone, perfect. Now I wanna finish it off with the rest of the cheese. So just sprinkle in a little bit at a time and then give it a stir. We've got all the Pecorino Romano in there now. See how it creates that creamy sauce in there and that delicious. I wanna put it right in my dish. Oh, that aroma. Can you guys hit that? We're not done yet. We gotta finish it off with a little bit extra magic. Cause I can imagine you're out there as a shepherd taking care of your sheep. You just finished this. It's absolutely delicious. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit more Pecorino Romano. So guys, hit it one more time with a good heavy sprinkle of Pecorino. Do you know what time it is? It's taste time. It's absolutely my favorite time. So I've got my serving dish. I got Pecorino cause I'm gonna throw a little bit more on there. When in Rome, do as Romans do. Let me show you how to do this. Take your tongs. Get in there a little bit, holding your tongs relatively snug, just give it a spin. Once you got a good spin on it, just give it a spin and then just really lightly loosen it up. Oh, how good is that? And then I want some of that guanciale, right? So I'm gonna grab a few of those bits. Guys, I wanna sprinkle the top with a little bit more Pecorino Romano. Okay guys, let's give it a hit. So first thing I'm gonna do is I want a piece of that pork. So I'm gonna fork that. Then I'm gonna give it a spin. The aroma is fantastic. You guys ready for a bite? Cook in Italian with Joe, taste a vision, smell a vision, love to share a vision. <laughs> guys, the aroma is the pork, it's the pepper, it's the cheese. Mm, that is perfect. Immediately you get hit with the cheese because it's on the top and you're getting a delicious flavor of the pork. And think about this, we didn't even add any salt, right? Because you added salt to the water the guanciale's got salt, Pecorino Romano's a salty cheese. It's perfect, and it gets better with every bite because you're getting the texture change, that crunch, just the edge of that crispness with the, with the pork, and now you're really feeling the pepper, that the heat from the pepper comes back in on you. And again, you're getting the starches from the, from the pasta, and you're getting the heat from the pepper, and the flavor of the pork just keeps working its way through your mouth. Mmm. Guys, it doesn't get more delicious and flavorful with such simplicity than that dish. You can understand why it's one of the four main Roman 
Roman pasta. So much fun spending some time with you guys in my kitchen today. Wasn't that great? Now remember, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and that thumbs up. Share a video with other people. That'd be great. And hopefully making them part of the Cooking Italian with Joe family like you. Also remember, click that link above or below. Visit us on our website, cookingitalianwithjoe.com. Grab yourself a few bottles of olive oil. Just hit buy it now. We'll drop ship it right to your front doorstep. Last but not least, guys, one of my most important tips always to close our video, you know, once a week, couple times a month, get around the table, have some fun, spend time with your loved ones. You don't know how long they're gonna be with you guys. Celebrate your heritage, no matter what that might be. And most importantly, guys, you'll set traditions with love the last of your lifetime. I know they did for me, hey, for my kitchen New Year's. Until next week, mwah, buon appetito.